Okay, moving on. We're into almost our last um, situations, at least in a circle. I believe so. Yeah, there's a lot. So when we um, get ready for our test, we're going to have kind of a formula sheet with all of these different pictures with their formulas on it. Um, because depending on the picture, the relationship is different. So we have different uh, different pictures we're working with today. Um, this is our first one. Um, and I want to make sure real quick you recall what these things are called. They are connecting two points on a circle, just any random two points. What would I call this segment and this segment? These are chords we're talking about. Chords are just, you can imagine just attaching a chord, like a string, to two points across a circle. We have a chord. And we have two chords that intersect. We have a new relationship with the angles and the arcs they create. If you notice when they cross, we have some angles going on in here. And then we have some arcs they open up to. Now, something important to notice about this picture is that they are not crossing at the center. If these crossed at the center, we would solve this question very differently. But they're just crossing in any random place. I could draw any two lines, and they just cross randomly not at the center so this is a new relationship what we have here now you have this picture that explains the relationship of what the angle is i like to put it in words so we have that the angles these um arcs correspond to notice that this angle opens up to this arc and this angle i'm gonna put that in blue opens up to this arc so what we're saying here when we say angle, angle equals half the arc plus the arc, we specifically mean, we specifically mean the arcs that the angles open up to. We are not referring to these arcs out here. These arcs go with these two angles. So depending on what angles you're given, we have to look at what arcs go with them. Now what this means though is that these two angles are actually going to be the same even if the arcs are different. Like we can see this is a really big arc, this is a small arc. We would find these two angles the same way. We take the two arcs, add them together, and then take half, which means again, divide by two, right? These angles are still gonna be the same, even if again, these arcs are different, they're gonna be found the same way. Let's go ahead and practice that to start with. You have angle equals half the arc plus the arc. So take a moment to uh, take draw this picture. Angle A is referring to this angle right here. Label on your picture the information we have and we'll try it. Okay, so given that arc WX is 60, so this is 60 degrees out here. That's from here to here. And we have ZY, that's this one, is 80. We wanna find the measure of angle A. So something to notice here, Again, if we have these two chords, this is the relationship angle equals one half, so divide by two, arc plus the arc. So here's how we know which arcs go together. If I take my angle and I draw a straight line through them, here's my angle, I'm gonna draw a straight line through it. Notice that I cross through these two arcs. So these are the arcs I'm referring to, the one the angle opens up to, and then the one on the other side, across from it. So all we have to do is plug it in. If I want to know what the angle is, I'm going to rewrite it here. I want to know the angle, so I can't plug in anything there, but I do have my two arcs. So we all we have to do is 1 half, 60 plus 80. And we get that the measure of angle A is one half of 140 is what this is, which ends up equaling 70 degrees. Now again, keep in mind, if angle A here is 70, this angle is also 70. This relationship applies for both those angles, they'd be found the exact same way. So pretty simple to start with. It does get a bit more tricky from there. We pull in some old information. So we're gonna try one more that gets a little bit trickier and then we'll have one more, one last formula. So same as always, take a look at this picture, go ahead and um, label the information that we have given, and let's try it. Okay, so A, B, you have to be very careful with what's being labeled here. And C, D is what we have. 
Now this is our end goal, measure of angle X. So here's the problem. To find angle X, I would need to know these angles. See how angle X opens up to AD and then is across from CB is the other opposite. So I can't just add these two angles and divide by two and get my answer because I'm not finding X at that point. However, what I would be finding is angle Y. These two arcs, notice if I draw my line, those two arcs help me find this angle. So actually, if I knew this angle, there's something I can do to then find angle X, our end goal. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's find angle Y using the relationship that the angle equals one half the arc plus the arc. I want you to try it. Again, we're not done after this. We have just found angle Y, and then we're gonna do something else to find angle X. Go ahead and find angle Y though. Okay, so our angle that we're trying to find, measure of angle Y, equals one half. We know the two arcs. We just gotta do some math, 72 plus 156. I get half of 228, which means that angle Y, once again, guys, be good geometry students and realize we're not done with the question, is 114. So I'm gonna go ahead and come back up to my picture and put that in the picture and hopefully we'll realize something here. Now again, what we have found is that this angle is 114. Our end goal, keep your eyes on the prize, is this angle. I want to see if you can think for a second and then I'll give you a hint. How can we find angle X given that together they make a straight line? Well if we know this is 114 hopefully remember that a straight line opens up to 180 degrees. So if I have 114 here and I need to get to 180 the rest of the way to find the measure of angle X, I'm gonna start with 180, take away what I have, and now I have angle X. So this should be 66 degrees, I believe. I'll double check. Yeah, and this is our answer. So these problems get tricky, guys. Again, it's not so straightforward with all of them. Sometimes it is, and you have to be able to recognize when is it straightforward versus I need to find this thing first in order to get that thing. That will happen a lot in this unit. We have to find something in order to get our actual last answer. So once more, these two together add up to 180 because they make a straight line. This is what's called a linear pair. I know it's been a while. So we were able to subtract from 180 there. So let's go ahead and we have one more relationship. This is our last formula of this kind where we have angle equals the arc. This is the last one. So we have a different picture here. I want you to take a moment. What are these called? These are slicing, there's a hint. These are slicing or cutting through the circle. What are these called? These are called secant lines. They slice through the circle, yeah? Or cut, how you want to imagine, uh, remember that. So what happens when we have these secants and they intersect outside a circle? We have a different relationship. Now again, the picture is there and it even kind of says it, but in the words we've been using, we're gonna have that this angle out here is one half outside minus inside. Now, if you do inside minus outside, you're not gonna get the wrong answer. It's just gonna be negative. So if you just if you just remove the negative and realize, oh, my answer can't be negative, then you're fine. But really, we should do outside minus the inside to keep the answer positive. Now, this relationship also applies for this picture as well, um, where this angle here is one half of my outside arc. So if you notice, there's two points here where these touch, little hint for what we're gonna fill in this blank for as well. This would be my outside arc, and this would be my inside arc. So right where it touches, that's where we have the two arcs divided. One arc, the other arc, notice the entire circle is highlighted. We're gonna keep that in mind for later. 
So because these touch, what are these lines called? Tangent lines, tangents touch. So this same relationship applies, angle equals half, subtract the two arcs. Let's try this. So take a, take a moment, draw your picture and label with the info. We've got that AD is 48, being very careful to label correctly. Just from there to there is 48 degrees. And then we have BC is 154. We are trying to find X, keep our eyes on the prize. So we're trying to find the angle. We have two secants here. So this is angle equals one half. I'm gonna go ahead and abbreviate this to say outside, oops. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Outside minus the inside, out minus in. Oops, I moved this around a little bit, sorry. There we go. So I mean the outside arc, that means the arc furthest away from the angle minus the inside arc. So I'll go ahead and try plugging this in. We're trying to find the angle, so I'll go ahead and actually just copy this down. Since I'm trying to find the angle, I just need to plug in everything over here. Go ahead and give it a shot. So you have one half, the outside angle is the 154, right? If here's my angle, sorry, outside arc. Ooh, I need to be careful with that. Outside arc, the one furthest away from the angle. And then I have the inside arc, it's kind of trapped there, is 48. Once again, if I get those switched, you're just gonna get a negative answer. And then just drop the negative. We, it shouldn't be negative. It's, it's an arc. We don't have negative measures. Okay, so we should get here that our answer for the measure of angle X is 53 degrees. So once more, we're just being real careful with our labeling and understanding what am I given versus what am I trying to find. Sometimes it can get tricky. Let's try one last one here. Now this again is two tangents because they touch but we have the same relationship so when you guys start to do all these problems together because on your test the hard part is all of these different pictures that we've looked at so far are going to be on one test we got to be able to look at a problem and know okay this is going to be the formula I'm going to use sometime in this question I might use some other things but we're going to end up using this formula so that's what we that's what we did we looked at this picture, we said, oh, this is a situation where the angle out here equals one half outside arc minus the inside arc. Let's go ahead and label what we have so far. Okay, so we have W, Y, X. W to Y to X. Trace it with your pencil is 217 degrees, and we're trying to find the angle. Well, this is all I have. This is what we call this, the outside of the inside angle. This is the outside angle, right? It's furthest arc, I'm sorry, I'm talking about arcs. It's furthest away from the angle. In order to get my angle, because that's my end goal, I need to know both. I have one half, well, my outside is 217, but I need to know my inside. So let's think about this here. If from here, this point to this point, 217 degrees. The inside arc, excuse me, the inside arc makes up the rest of the circle. So how many degrees are in an entire circle? 360, so if we have 217 so far, this arc is the rest of the circle, 360, minus 217. This is gonna give us the rest of the circle, the inside arc. We get 143 degrees. So there we go. So when we have two tangents, this is going to happen. Very often they only give you one of the arcs and then you use this fact that a whole circle has 363 deg uh, sorry, 360 degrees to find um, the other arc. Let's plug this in, we got 0.5 or 1 half, 217 minus 143. We should get that the measure of angle A is 37.
So we're gonna practice this some more in class. Again, really the hard part is when we have to find something else before we can find our end goal. Those types of questions, we're gonna practice more in class before I have you guys do this assignment.